Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Alec from High Noon Hobby. If you're new here, thank you very much for checking in. And if you aren't new here, welcome back, friends, family. It's good to have you here. I'm incredibly tired. It's nearly 12 o'clock on a Monday night. But I promised you guys that I would be posting a video on Sunday. I did not post a video on Sunday. I was super busy this weekend, uh, both at the first 801 RCC comp of 2022 which there will be videos coming from that very soon uh, as well as exploring a bunch of new potential competition sites for this year um, and then also working out a bunch of the stuff that we need to work out to get the website live which it should be going live tomorrow i'm hoping i know i've been saying that for weeks i promise it does exist it really does. It's not just a running joke. Well, it is, but all right, let's get into this. So today I just wanted to take a quick look at whether or not I think it's worth it to put nearly $300 worth of brass on your TRX-4. I personally purchased a bunch of brass from GPM a couple of months ago. I've been running it now for a couple of months. I've put nearly 20 or maybe over 20 miles on my rig with all of this brass on here. And so I wanted to give you guys my thoughts. This is kind of a review of the GPM brass and kind of just an overview of how I feel about putting brass on a TRX-4 and how it's going to increase your performance. So a couple months ago, I put almost $300 worth of GPM brass upgrades on my TRX-4. I hadn't had it for very long at that point. So this was kind of a big deal, kind of a big upgrade. And I didn't know exactly what I was getting into. I didn't know... I didn't have a good sense for how the performance of the rig really was without the brass. I don't feel like I spent enough time with it to be able to really confidently tell you how well the TRX-4 performs with no weight on it whatsoever. But I did have a little bit of experience before upgrading uh, and putting all this brass on. And what I can say is that the TRX-4 right out of the box is an absolutely fantastic trail crawling vehicle. If all you're trying to do is just run alongside on a dirt trail or a few little obstacles here and there, out of the box it's going to do perfectly fine. Where the TRX-4 really starts to struggle and where you'll start to notice that you might want to add some weight in proper places to try to drop down um, that front end is going to be on big climbs big verticals big ascents um, also if you're doing any sort of side hilling you're going to notice that out of the box the weight distribution is much higher than it should be especially with a big body like the trx4 bronco xlt body so that's what i run and i noticed that it definitely adds a lot of weight up top and the trx4 out of the box does not have a weight uh, does not have enough weight down low to compensate for that big body okay i'm gonna put a warning here right out of the gate if you put this much brass on your truck and you don't upgrade your motor or your esc you're probably gonna have troubles if you don't believe me you can go back and watch part one of my uh video series on my first scale event and if you even don't feel like watching the whole thing, just skip to the end and you'll see what I'm talking about, about putting a bunch of brass on your TRX-4 and not upgrading electronics. I promise you, your motor will not be happy with you. It might last a little while, it might not last very long at all, but I'm not going to say that the motor that they put in the TRX-4 out of the box is going to handle adding a whole bunch of extra weight to your truck. So to break it down, the parts that I added from GPM are going to be the C-knuckles on the front, the inners and outers on the portals in the front, and then just the portal outers in the back. Then I also put a brass diff cover up front, and I put an aluminum diff cover from GPM in the back. I also used one of GPM's aluminum skid plates, which is a single bolt skid plate for the bottom of the TRX-4 that just helps it slide over obstacles just a little bit better on the, on the belly itself. In terms of the quality of these parts, as I was putting them on, I noticed that the machining seemed pretty high quality. The tolerances were good and the installation was fairly easy. Typically, if you're putting parts onto your truck, you're gonna find out relatively quickly if their tolerances aren't good. If their machining is off, you're gonna notice it as soon as you start trying to put stuff together, especially in portal covers where you've gotta be pressing bearings 
into this brass. With GPM, I had a really good experience. I didn't have any bearing stick and it was generally fairly easy to put the whole thing together. If you don't have any experience taking apart portals, putting them back together, if you didn't build your truck from a kit, this might take a little bit more time for you to do. But for me, this install took just around two or maybe two and a half hours to do all of the brass upgrades that I just talked about. All right, so let's get down to what everyone is here for, and that is performance. How does adding nearly $300 worth of brass affect the performance of your TRX-4? I think everyone's going to have a little bit of a different experience here for a lot of different reasons. One, not everyone's probably going to choose the exact setup that I did in terms of brass parts. You might choose to not do C-hubs. You might choose to only do outers on the front and not do inners and not do anything on the back. But whatever you choose to do, I think the fact that you're on this video now probably shows that you have figured out that brass upgrades do mean something. Now, are they worth it in terms of the performance that you can get from $300 worth of brass upgrades versus, I don't know, maybe just $120 or $150 worth of Rock Pirates parts to drop an SCX-10 2 down lower and not even adding any weight to it? This is where it starts to get into your own personal preferences and what you want to do with your rig. For me personally, I was really into the idea when I started this RC hobby of building kind of a really atrociously heavy rig and seeing what it could do. Adding this much brass, like all of the parts that I listed earlier, to your truck definitely starts to put it into the egregiously heavy zone. Um, my truck right now, granted this is also with a GPM aluminum front bumper and a winch, a 3D printed roof rack and a 3D printed interior, but my truck is over 10 pounds and getting close to 11, maybe even 11 and a half pounds if I add a big battery into it. For me, the performance improvements really were worth it because I also wanted the weight increase as well. It was kind of all packaged into one. If all you're looking for is performance, like if you're just trying to make a class two crawler that's going to kill it in competitions, I don't think that doing something like this is at all the road that you'd wanna take. If you're trying to be budget conscious at least, you'd probably do something like start with an SCX-10 2 builder's kit, add some Rock Pirates parts, and you'd almost spend less on that entire build than I did on brass. And I know that you'd outperform me on technical climbs. That being said, this truck's really fun. Adding a lot of weight down low has made it really planted, made it side hill pretty well, and made it take really steep climbs amazingly well, especially given how big of a truck it is. People look at my Bronco all the time and they think there's absolutely no way that it's going to make it up some of the obstacles that I am able to make it up. And I do attribute that in large part to putting as much weight as I did, especially in the front of the truck really helps keep that the front of the truck down low as you're climbing, as you're ascending, and it helps settle the suspension down so that you don't have as much jolting up and the truck doesn't want to peel away from the wall as you're trying to climb up stuff. All right, so overall, do I think it's worth it? Again, this whole video is basically, if you can't tell, one big message as to it's your own personal opinion as to whether or not you think this is going to fit the style of driving that you want to do. If you want a really, really heavy truck and you're willing to deal with the shortcomings of having a really heavy truck, it's super fun and I would definitely recommend it. But if you're just looking for performance, I think there are definitely more cost effective options at least, although they might not be so shiny in gold. Just saying. Again, just a reminder, if you do add this much brass to your truck, you're going to be changing out a whole lot of other stuff as well. Electronics generally out of the box on any truck aren't going to be able to handle adding this much weight. And so that means you're going to be spending a decent amount of money getting an upgraded motor and ESC so that you can, well, pull this amount of weight around. On top of that, to handle side hilling at all once you add this much weight, you're definitely going to be looking at upgrading tires and putting upgraded tire foams inside of those tires so that you're not dealing with a ton of tire rollover that's just 
absolutely unusable. All right, guys, I think that that's all I've got for this video. I tried to make it really short. I'm going to try to edit it down even more, but I do appreciate you guys watching. If you have any other questions that you would like me to answer in a video format like this, go ahead and leave them down below. I'd be happy to take your guys' responses and turn them into a video like this. That would just be a blast. Also, don't forget, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to High Noon Hobby. We'll be posting two times a week, every week in 2022. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram, follow our Facebook page, go ahead and check our website, which is linked down below. Hopefully that's up by the time you're watching this. And on there, as well as our Facebook page, you'll be able to see all of the events that we have scheduled for 2022. Right now, we only have one event scheduled in March, but by the time you're watching this, we'll probably have a ton more. We're guessing that we'll have somewhere close to 10, maybe 15 events this year, but we'll see what we can pull off. It's all thanks to you guys. We really appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next one.